Hey guys, welcome to yet another video. Today we have with us Aryan Sharma. He just cracked an international offer with Meta Facebook as a production engineering intern. So welcome Aryan and welcome to uh, Prep Bytes podcast. And if you can briefly introduce yourself, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Aryan Sharma. I am a sophomore at JIT Noida. And I'm currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in, in uh, electrical and engineering communication. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, that's all. Nice, nice. So I assume like you don't have a CS background, but you still managed to like uh, get into a CS based role. So we will talk about it, how you did it. And uh, first of all, like if we can, if I can ask like what, uh, the list of offers you have uh, right now, uh, internship offers. Uh, I, I assume only, there are a lot. Yeah. No, no, no. There's okay. nothing like that. There's only a single offer. Okay. Facebook. Okay. Dublin. Okay. But that's that's uh, really like nice, like to have a uh, have offer from a fan company, right? It's a dream company for a lot of students. So, uh, if you can briefly explain, like I think most of the students are familiar with the software engineering roles, but I think yours is a production engineer role. So, if you can briefly explain the differences and what a production engineer is. Uh, sure. So production engineering base is basically uh, a same like an SRE role, site reliability engineer. Okay. Uh, it's just named as uh, for production engineering in Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, we do coding uh, and we do the server stuff like troubleshooting okay. and all the internal tools. Mm -hmm. So it is a mix of both okay. programming plus server maintenance, everything. Okay, great. And uh... What was the interview process like? Like, you know, were there any specific rounds for production engineer which were different from a software engineering role? So, how, how, general, how was the interview process? So, the first round was a like basic MCQ question mm -hmm. uh, based on networking and Linux internals and Linux commands. Okay. Okay. So that was there were standard MCQs and I guess uh, twenty M MCQs in eighteen minutes. Mm -hmm. So that was easy. And the uh, next one was a coding round, 45 minutes and two questions. Mm -hmm. And you can expect a lead code medium and a question based on file handling. File handling, okay. Uh, and there was no language barrier, like you can use Java, C++, Python, anything you want. Okay, okay. And which platform was used for all your online tests? Anything specific? Uh, Coderpad. Code, code, code Coderpad, code okay. For code yeah. And the last one was a systems round. Hmm. Uh, which was on Linux internals, uh, CPU scheduling, virtualization, memory, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like the all kernel, basic kernel OS fundamentals, right? Yes, yes. Okay, great, great. So uh, in total of like uh, three to four rounds, right? Yes, three rounds. Three rounds. Okay, great, great. And so, and there were like anything, uh, anything special that you felt like there is a difference in production engineer that they were they were looking into or it's it was like just CS fundamentals you think uh, I guess the last round which was basically uh, troubleshooting like mm -hmm. you are given a scenario a uh, server mm -hmm. with high uh, CPU usage or memory usage okay. so how okay, how will you troubleshoot it so that was specific to the production engineering role okay and did you specifically apply for a production engineer role like what was the scenario and generally students have this question of how should we approach international uh, job offers, right? So, especially it's hard to crack an international internship offer and job offer. So, is there anything special you did? Anything special on your resume, or it was like normal? No, I don't like it. Was a normal apply for a for the career portal without any referral. Mm -hmm. Okay, without and, any referral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. and I think I applied on the Sui role too. So, in P production engineering both. Okay. okay. So, I never got an email for the Sui role. Okay. But luckily I got for the production engineer. Nice. Nice. And anything you think like anything extra is needed for an international offer? Uh, or anything extra no, that I, they look because I have heard like some students talk about culture fit. Like they see like if you will be a cultural fit in the in a in a different environment. So anything like that, you think? No, I don't think so. Like it's basically it's it's more easier because there was no like uh, expected graduation date. Like they oh. were flexible. If you are a 2024 okay. graduate or a 2023 graduate, they were flexible. Like it okay. works. Okay. And That's a good can... thing about... Sorry. Okay. And, and if you can just briefly explain your 
what was your journey leading up to this internship offer in your college and how you prepared for it okay so basically i started programming in 2018 when when i was in 11th standard oh okay so so there was a program called google coding hmm i think it's discontinued now but yeah uh, it was basically an open source program mm mm-hmm. for for uh, kids for up to 12th standard kids and uh, there were tasks from like all all organizations almost similar to gsoc but there were small tasks okay. instead of a big big project and you can solve tasks of any organization you don't have to stick with one mm mm-hmm. so that's when i started and then i started doing some competitive programming like not much but just for the practice okay not very much into contest and stuff and then in college i almost did did cp and some projects like not very advanced but yes little like on doc something okay. on docker or mm-hmm. some front end flask app mm-hmm. just stuff only okay okay and and do you think like uh, your resume played any part in in your like selection or like resume was a major part or your interviews were the major part in your selection uh, i guess interviews were the major part but all i can say is my resume was a mix of open source and competitive programming both okay so it was a like this a mixture of both it was it was not one sided like not only cp mm-hmm. or not only projects mm-hmm. it had both okay and, and i think yeah this is a very uh, like big dilemma in students like in which direction students should go like students should go to, into like deeply into competitive programming or should pursue um, development as well and do you think like uh, what's the right balance and how did you strike the right, that balance of like pursuing both uh, what you can do is you can uh, keep on practicing hmm. you hmm. can do like 3 to 4 questions a day like it it hardly takes 2 hours hmm. and the rest of the time you can give to the project mm. like you don't work on projects every day yes you just give a week two weeks or three weeks max and you are done with it you don't have to like spend all your time on projects you can give a week then you can come back to cp mm-hmm. then you can after some time when you think i have to, i want to do more project or something fascinates me more you can start doing it okay. it feels like you become rusty after some time but you can pick it up like one or two days after you will be in the flow mm-hmm. you can manage both yeah i also agree like if your fundamentals like data structures and algorithm fundamentals are clear then you can pick it up uh, again like any time you want right it's yeah. not like you will be uh, you, it will take months right nah. so yeah great and uh, i think uh, we covered a lot of questions so and any any specific resources that you followed for your preparation of data structures or cs fundamentals that you want to share uh, with students uh, yeah any sources so for like if you are specifically pre- preparing for the production engineering role mm-hmm. uh for sys for and specifically for systems round mm-hmm. you can read a book uh, the linux kernel development by robert love okay and for operating systems you can go with galvin nice and mm-hmm. if you have a dedicated networking round Mm. you can go with a uh, networking a top down approach that's also a great book okay so these three book you can read for like basic os and stuff and for dsa i think give up the takes for geeks and youtube as an of content nice nice so, and uh, i think uh, people are not much familiar with production engineer or like uh, the site reliability engineer is uh, still a more famous term but do you think any there are any major compensation differences between a uh, software engineer and a site reliability engineer because generally students are not that enthusiastic into going the site reliability engineer role right it's more of like software engineer is the main focus so do you think like uh, for whom uh, sci- uh, production engineer can be a good fit uh, like if you like coding yeah but you also like troubleshooting stuff Hmm. you want to know how like how netflix is delivering content how yes. these how networking is done hmm. so if you are interested in that field i think you can go to the towards the production engineering or sre role hmm. and the compensation is almost same okay like it won't be it won't be less hmm. it can be higher but it won't <laughs> be less nice. that's all i can say yeah i think yeah. this is a great way to put it like just uh, go through the 
go through the job description, I would say, and let's see if that interests you. And there is no harm in applying or giving an interview. Under the hood, it's the same CS fundamentals that are used in both the, both the fields, right? Yeah, nice. So I, I, with that, I will just, um, my, I will like ask you my last question or like in last point, any final piece of advice for students who are about to sit uh, in, in upcoming interviews and who are like nervous in giving interviews and anything, any piece of advice you want to give? Uh, practice mock interviews. Hmm. That's the best advice, advice you can get. Like go on PRAM, they are free. Hmm. So give, give as many mock interviews as you can. Practice more, don't be panic and it will be okay. There's no harm in giving interviews. Nice, yeah. So uh, just to repeat, like it's PRAMP, P-R-A-M-P. PRAMP, it's a very famous yes. platform for mock interviews where you can give mock interviews in any field you want. Yeah, please uh, go yeah. carry forward. Yeah. And for like second year students, uh, stop wasting your time and <laughs> like campus experts or something like this. Okay. Focus on your fundamentals and concepts. Yeah. And yeah. apply, just apply. Don't hmm. think that you will get a call or not. Just apply. Yeah, don't self-reject yourself. Just apply. Right? In college, that's the least you can do as a second year, third year student, right? And if, if you get rejected, then be it. It's not the end of the world, right? So, and I think in college, you still have time if you face any rejection to like apply the feedbacks that you have received to motivate yourself to build your profile in a different way. So... I think uh, that that was a great piece of advice. And I think it's it's easier to say like not waste time, but students have a habit of that. So I think students are very well aware of that. So with that, I will uh, I will just close this conversation. And thanks again, Aryan. Thanks for the great conversation that we had. And hopefully we'll meet again and uh, I'll set up an interview as a full-time production engineer is in Meta in upcoming weeks and days. And so yeah, thanks. Thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so that's it, guys. In today's video, I'll be coming up again in next week with a new guest. Thanks again for watching.